Hi, let us study the quarter joint. This kind of quarter joint is called as spigot socket type of quarter joint. This is the picture of Don Bosco. This is the picture of Mrs. Alfonso. Let us look into the question. It is required to design a spigot socket type of quarter joint to transmit an actual load of 42 kN. Quarter joint is used to connect piston rod in cross head in steam engine. Select appropriate material for its components and draw a sketch showing the major dimensions on it. In this figure you can observe the steam engine. In the steam engine at this point you can see the cross head and here you can see the extension of the piston. This is connected with the help of the quarter pin. Hence this is one of the applications of the quarter joint. The quarter joint consists of three parts. It consists of the quarter pin, it consists of the socket and the spigot. The spigot is mated with the socket and from above the quarter pin is inserted. And after some time it is hammered in so that it completely sets in. For other design videos, refer the link provided in the description of this video. One of the part of the quarter joint is the quarter pin. You can observe that taper is provided to one side of the quarter pin and to the other side taper is not provided. Generally, the taper is 1 in 24. There are two reasons why the taper is provided. When the quarter is inserted in the slot through the socket and the spigot and pressed by the means of hammer, it becomes tight due to wedge action. This ensures tightness of the joint in operating condition and prevents loosening of the parts. The other reason is, due to taper shape, it is easy to remove the quarter and dismantle the joint. The taper of quarter as well as slot is on one side. Machining taper on two sides of machine part is more difficult than making taper on one side. Also, there is no specific advantage of taper on both the sides. The clearance between the taper and the slot is 1.5 to 3 mm. The spigot end consists of three sections. One is the with the cylinder end and you can see a slot where the quarter can be inserted. The other section is spigot collar and the next is rod end of the spigot. So these are the three sections in the spigot end. The socket also consists of three parts. It consists of the rod end of the socket, it consists of cylinder end of the socket and it consists of collar end of the socket. You can see the quarter gets inserted in this slot. Some part of the slot is on the cylinder, some part of the slot is on the collar. Let us look into the quarter joint design. So we, here we have the tree diagram and in the tree diagram we can see that the spigot rod is subjected to tensile stress. The spigot cylinder is subjected to crushing tensile and shear stress. The spigot collar is subjected to crushing and circumferential stress. One can also observe that socket cylinder is subjected to tensile stress, socket collar is subjected to crushing and shear stress, socket rod is subjected to circumferential stress. The quarter pin is subjected to shear and bending stress. So this gives us the idea how the quarter design should be taken forward. In this diagram, we can see the front view and side view of the quarter joint. The socket is connected with the spigot with the help of the quarter pin. B is called as the width of the quarter pin. You can see the quarter pin has a thickness T which is constant, which is uniform. But the B dimension, that is the width of the quarter pin, is changing from bottom to the top. One can observe that there is a clearance between the spigot and the socket at this part. 
You can also observe a clearance between the quarter pin and the socket here as well as here. The other clearance present is between the quarter and the spigot at this part. So generally these clearances are from 1.5 mm to 3 mm. The other dimensions of the quarter joint are defined like this. The diameter of the rod is represented by D. D1 is diameter of the spigot cylinder. T is thickness of the quarter and so on. You can read this and find out. Let us look into the free body diagram of the forces. The free body diagram is constructed using the principle that actions and reactions are equal and opposite. You can see the applied force P is acting on the left hand side and right hand side of the quarter joint. Now when we analyze the socket end, because of this applied force P, there is induced force to the opposite end that is given by P by 2 at the top and P by 2 at the bottom. When you add together this both P by 2, you will get P and hence the forces here on the horizontal will cancel out each other. You can also observe on the quarter joint because of the socket, a force P is induced on the quarter pin on the left hand side and here you can observe that a force P by 2 and P by 2 is induced in the quarter due to the spigot. Hence the forces acting horizontal to the quarter is zero. You can also observe on the spigot this is an applied force P here as well as to the opposite side here. They cancel out each other and you can say that the spigot is in equilibrium. Hence, in this way, we have understood the free body diagram for the forces. The permissible stresses of the quarter joint can be defined in this way. The design sigma t is the permissible tensile stress for sockets, pigot, and quarter. Crushing stress design is represented by the symbol and it is the same for sockets, pigot, and quarter. The design shear stress is the permissible shear stress for socket, spigot and quarter. Let us assume that all the parts in the quarter joint are made of the same material that is C40. The yield strength for this material is 330 Newton per mm square. This value can be obtained from the design data book PSG page number 1.9. We know that on the quarter joint, the load acting is the static load. Based on VM fares and PSG page number 1.43, the factor of safety can be taken as 2. We can add 1 to the factor of safety considering stress concentration factor. Therefore, the factor of safety now is 3. Design stresses with respect to the material C40. Design sigma T is equal to design sigma P and that is SYT upon factor of safety. Hence, design sigma T is 110 Newton per mm square. Design tau is equal to 55 Newton per mm square. And design sigma CR is equal to 1.3 times design sigma T that comes around 1.43 Newton per mm square. Let us look into the assumptions in the quarter joint. The rods are subjected to axial tensile force the material is homogeneous, isentropic and obeys the Hooke's law. The stress concentration factor due to slot and steps are neglected. Since due to hammering of quarter into the slot, the stress due to initial tightening of the quarter is neglected. We can start the design calculations. We will start with the design of the rod. The rod is subjected to a tensile stress. We can see here the area on which it is acting. If we look into this cross section across this area, this area will appear like this. You can see the same in the 3D view as well. It is like this, it will break from here. Hence, sigma t is equal to p upon a where the area is pi by 4 d square which is equivalent to design sigma t. We know design sigma t and we know what is p that is 42 into 10 raised to 3 newton. Hence, we can calculate the d value. So when we calculate it, the D value comes around 22.048, which is approximately equal to 23 mm. Design of the spigot. The spigot is subjected to crushing stress. 
induced in the slot of the spigot due to quarter pin. So let us understand that in this slot the quarter pin is going to come. So it is going to touch at, at one side of this particular spigot and let us say that is this side. You can look here also in the 3D view. So this is called as the crushing stress that is acting on this part of the particular spigot. And this area is a rectangle. We can say it's a projected area and that is D1 into T. So here where it is projected area, we write D1 into T. Rest we know, we know the value of P. We know the value of design sigma CR. But we can observe that we neither know the value of D1 nor we know the value of T. So we will keep this equation like this and move forward. We will put in the values of P and design sigma CR and we can get D1 into T as 293.70. Let us look into the other stress. The tensile stress induced in the slot of spigot due to quarter pin is something like this. You can see when the spigot is being pulled from both the sides, it will break at this particular section. And the section is a shaded section here and there is a slot apart from it. So we will only calculate that shaded area. Here you can understand that this is the whole circle. So we have said it pi by 4 d1 square. Here d1 is the diameter of the spigot cylinder. We have to only consider this area, divide the slot area from this. The area of the circle is pi by 4 d1 square and the slot area we can take as minus d1 into t. One can observe the side view and can see that the circle and the slot within it. This is the 2D view for this. Now we will put in the values. We know here the value of P. We know here the value of design sigma T. And we know the value of D1 and D1 T. So we will substitute them and we can find out the value of D1. So the value of D1 after simplifying it comes around 29.32 mm which can be approximated as 30 mm. The next step is to find out T. Now we have calculated D1. So T from this equation we can find out. So finally T comes around 9.79 mm which can be approximated as 10 mm. In this way we have found out D1 and T both the important dimensions that is connected with this particular calculation. Let us look into the double shear stress induced in the spigot due to quarter pin. We can observe in this 3D figure because of the push the quarter, it will push further this particular section of the spigot and which will get sheared off because of that force P. Now the area here is D1 into A. This is one area that is called as area 1. We have one more area called as area 2 which is at the back of side of this particular section. And hence, because we have two areas here, we have multiplied 2 in this particular area that is 2 times A into D. We can have a better look at this looking at the 2D view where we can see here this is the area 1 that got sheared off and this is area 2. Hence, this 2D view gives us a better understanding of the area. Now let us put in the value. We, in this particular strength equation, we don't know what is the value of A, but we know what is D1. So after substitution, we can find out the value of A, which comes around 12.72 mm, which is approximately equal to 13 mm. Here, let us see the crushing stress induced in the spigot collar due to socket collar. Here, we can see the spigot and the colored area is the crushed area. This crushing stress is induced because of the socket collar. In the 3D view, you can observe the colored area where the crushing stress takes place. The area for this can be written as pi by 4 d4 square minus pi by 4 d1 square, where d4 is the outer diameter of the collar and d1 is the inner diameter of the collar. In this stress equation, we can see that we know what is D1, we know what is P, we know design sigma CR, we can substitute these values and we can find out the value of D4. 
So the value of D4 turns out to be as 35.69 mm, which can be approximated as 36 mm. Now let us see the circumferential shear stress induced in the spigot collar due to socket collar. Because of the socket collar, the spigot collar may be sheared off and it will appear like a ring finger as you can observe here. Now this area is the sheared area which is a circumferential area which can be written as pi d1 into t1 where t1 is the length of shear whereas d1 is the diameter of the shear. You can substitute the values in this strength equation and in this particular equation we are not aware of t1. We can calculate t1 as 8.10 putting in the values and we can approximate it to a 9 m. Hence at this point we have finished with the design of spicot. Let us start with the design of the socket. The tensile stress induced in the slot of the socket can be observed here. When the force P is applied, the shaded area is stressed and the shaded area can be written as pi by 4 d square minus d1 square where d square is the outer diameter and d1 is the inner diameter. One can observe that there is a slot that is subtracted from this circle. It can be written as d2 minus d1 multiplied by t. In this diagram, you can see that the 2D view is shown. Here the section at yy appears like this and you can see the slot needs to be subtracted from the circle. Also the inner diameter has to be subtracted from the circle. The shaded area is the stressed area. We can substitute the values here where we know what is d1, we know what is t, we know what is p and design sigma t. After substitution the d2 value can be known. The d2 value comes around 38.68 which can be approximated as 39 mm. The crushing stress induced in the socket collar due to quarter pin. We can observe in this figure the quarter pin comes in contact with the socket collar in this particular portion and this particular portion. You can observe it the red part here. Now we need to calculate this area. This area can be understood using this 2D figure when D3 is the outer diameter and D1 is the inner diameter where T is the thickness of the quarter pin. After substituting the known values, we can put what is D1 as 30, T as 10 mm, we know value of P and design sigma CR, we get the value of D3. D3 turns out to be as 59.37 which is which can be approximated as 60 mm. Now let us study the shear stress induced in the socket collar due to quarter pin. Because of the push provided by the quarter pin, this particular area will be sheared out of the socket collar. Here we have area 1 and the behind as area 2. Both the areas will be sheared off and this particular rectangular section will come out of this particular socket collar. This can be understood with the help of this 2D figure where D3 is the outer diameter, D1 is the inner diameter and C is the width of the collar. You can understand this better using this area also where this section is area 1 and that section is area 2. Therefore, we are multiplying it by 2 and taking the cross section as D3 minus D1 into C. We can put up the values that is we know what is D3, we know what is D1 and then we know what is the value of P and design tau. After putting up the known values, C can be calculated as 12.72 which is approximated as 13 mm. Here let us calculate the circumferential shear stress induced in the rod end of socket. We can see that this particular rod is rigidly connected with the socket. Because of the pull, it may get sheared off circumferentially out of the socket. The circumferential area can be written as pi into d into L1, where the L1 is a part of the rod that is rigidly connected with the socket. We can put up the known values that is the d, p and design tau and calculate the value of L1. So L1 should be at least 10.56 which can be approximated as 11 mm. 
At this point, the design of the socket is completed. Now we can start the design of the quarter pin. We can observe the direct stresses induced in the quarter pin. This particular P force is applied because of the spigot and the force P by 2 here and P by 2 here is applied due to the socket. Because of these two opposite forces, the quarter pin gets sheared off in this particular section as well as in this particular section. There are two sections involved here. Hence, we will be multiplying the area by 2. And the cross section of the particular quarter pin can be taken as B into T. Hence, the direct shear stress can be calculated using this formula. We can substitute the value of T, P and design tau. After substituting these known values, we can find out the value B that is the width of the quarter. The width of the quarter is calculated as 38.18 which can be approximated as 39 mm. Now we can analyze the bending stress induced in the quarter. Bending stress due to the clearance between the pin and the spigot occurs. The bending analysis of quarter pin is considered as simply supported beam with uniformly distributed load in the middle portion and the uniformly varied load in the remaining portion. The bending stress induced in the quarter can be written as sigma b is equal to m max multiplied by y upon i y y which is less than or equal to design sigma t. The bending stress induced in the quarter, let us understand the three rules connected to the bending stress. When considering forces in the bending stress in symmetric body, only half the section of the body is considered. That is, forces acting on half of the section will be considered. The distance between the forces and the center line is considered. The force intend to revolve towards the center of the body, that is the center of the quarter pin. Let us understand this figure. In this figure, the uniformly distributed load here is because of the spigot and the diameter of the spigot is represented by D1. Here, this particular section is because of the socket collar that is the uniformly varying load. Here also, it is because of the socket collar that is the uniformly varying load. But you can see that the force magnitude is P by 2 here and P by 2 here. Whereas due to spigot, it is P. We know the bending rule stresses, so only half the section will be taken care of. So we'll be considering only half section of the quarter pin. So we are interested to find out this load. We will consider the uniformly distributed load that is half here into a point load. So therefore, here it will be P by 2 and here it will be P by 2. This P by 2 will not be considered, only the above one will be considered. The distance of this force from the center line is D1 by 4. Because this D1 is half here and half here, so it is D1 by 2 at this particular point. And we have to consider the point force with respect to the uniformly distributed load for the half. So it is further divided into half. That's why it appears as D1 by 4. Now, at this particular section, we can see that the force is acting at a distance of x. This x distance plus we have to add the distance d1 by 2 because only half section will be considered. So, d1 by 2 plus x. The question is, what is x? x is, if you can see the whole quarter length, okay, so that is the socket collar is d4. So, we have this d4 and we have to consider half of the d4 so it is d4 by half then we have to we have to subtract d1 by 2 so we are subtracting minus d1 by 2 and the point load is acting at one third distance because the rule is of the uniformly varying load hence the x distance is equal to d4 minus d1 upon 3 into 2 let us understand the same with respect to this half the diagram so we are only considering half the section here as you can see that. So we have this particular section that is force P by 2. So we are taking this P by 2 force and writing it here. And then we have this X. What is X? X is D4 minus D1 upon 3 by 2. 
This two is because of the half part only we are considering, and this three is because the uniformly varying load is located at one third of the distance. So that's why this three is coming. So we have d four minus d one upon three into two. This much distance we have to add again. That is d one by two. So we have added plus d one by two. Now we have minus sign here because as I told before. This particular point load is tending to rotate at the center of the quarter that is here. So when it revolves here, and you can see the other force that is here, that all that is also in the opposite direction coming to the center. So we are because it is opposite, we are taking the minus sign, and we have the p by two load, and the distance of the force from the center line is d one by four, and that's how we get d one by four. and hence we have got here the formula for the maximum moment after we have got this maximum bending moment we will be simplifying the equation in this we can observe that we have p by 2 here and p by 2 here so we will take p by 2 in common and rest of the terms we will take the lcm after taking the lcm we will get the equation as p by 2 bracket d4 by 6 Plus d1 by 12. Hence, my m max will be p by 2, d4 by 6 plus d1 by 12 in bracket. My i y y, depending upon the section of the quarter, t into b cube upon 12, and y is equal to b by 2. So these are some of the formulas we need to substitute in the bending stress. So in this way we will substitute where we will say p by two d four by six plus d one by twelve in bracket multiplied by b by two upon t into b cube over twelve. We know most of the terms and we will keep b as the unknown and we know design sigma t. After substituting the knowns, we'll get the b as thirty one point two zero that is equal to thirty two mm. Now we have got the B value as 39 mm from the direct shear stress, B value as 32 mm from the bending stress. Hence, we will take the higher value and the final B value as 39 mm. After finding out the width of the quarter, we will find out the length of the quarter. Length of the quarter from this diagram we can understand. It is little more than the collar of the socket. The collar diameter of the socket is d4, and we add some margin of 10, so the total length we can get as 65 mm. Slope of the quarter, that is that we have the taper, and how much taper we want to give? So generally, taper is given as from 1 is to 24 to 1 is to 32. We'll take taper as 1 is to 30, and from this particular, if we join from this point to this point, we'll get a triangle. And we say that triangle is tan alpha, so tan alpha is b1 minus b2 upon l. So from here we will get one equation. We can simplify the equation like this. We have 1 by 30 is equal to b1 minus b2 upon l. We know what is l. We know what is 1 by 30. We'll simplify that, and we will get equation as 2.1. 6x plus b2 is equal to b1. This is the final equation. We can take average value of b. B is equal to b1 plus b2 upon 2. So we know this equation. We'll take the 2 to this side, and we get the equation as 78 is equal to b1 plus b2. In this equation, we'll substitute b1. So b1 we got from here. So this equation will substitute into this equation, and we get the final b2 value. The B2 value is 37.917. Once we get the B2 value, we can again substitute it and find out the B1 value. In this way, we have found out all the dimensions B1, B, and B2 of the quarter joint. So we have found out the various widths of the quarter. Clearance between the spigot and the quarter pin can be taken as 1.5 mm to 3 mm. At this point, we can say the design of the quarter joint is completed we have some references here you can take these references for your further study